Hey, before I get going, just a short little disclaimer. If you have zero interest in the iOS platform, you don't use an iPad, this is not something that is of interest to you, please find another video. I'm trying to save you time. I've tried to make this as short as I can, but I don't want to waste your time. So if you're in the, the Camp Dallas, you have no interest in anything that I'm talking about, don't have a push, uh, just don't want to mess with this, then please click away. I'm trying to save you some time. Thanks. Hey, it's Wabbit. I'm going to break this video down into chapters, so if you don't feel like hearing me talk, you can kind of skip ahead to uh, the parts that will help you out so I'm not wasting your time. Let me give you a little background of why I'm doing this. So I was inspired by SenseSeeker. Uh, I will put a link to his channel, uh, specifically the video that talks about this. Basically, long story short, uh, and I'm using a little sarcasm here, he's got like 50 cents, hardware cents. And what he was doing was using the Ableton Push to be able to play those synths. And he would basically uh, create a little jam and then layer those and then down the road, you know, create something out of that, whether it's a song, etc. And instead of me going out and buying a bunch of hardware synths, I've only got two, the Micro Freak, uh, the Arturia Micro Freak, and the Roland J6. I thought, well, wait a minute. I, over the past year, have accumulated a few uh, iOS synth apps and why can't I do something like that I like to emulate what I see online versus going out and running myself into debt I just figure hey let me give it a shot uh, so what I did was is what you're gonna see in this video is connect the iPad uh, to the computer use the push to do something very similar and it's, I think it's kind of cool. I'm not saying you have to do all this stuff. I am not suggesting, especially if you are starting or just getting into this, this is not saying the path you have to do. What you've seen or what you will see on this channel has basically been about a year and a half's work of just knowledge and things acquired. And I just thought, let me just give this a shot. So I just wanted to share this with others in case you might find this something uh, that will be of use to you. So in terms of the gear, uh, it's pretty basic. You've got the Ableton Push, uh, an iPad. In my particular case, I have the iPad Type-C. Uh, and then uh, I'm using a USB-C to USB-C cable. And then the Mac uh, connecting the iPad to that. Coffee, I would strongly recommend, or a beverage of choice, depending on what you're into. All right, in terms of connecting everything, it's pretty basic. So in my case, I just plug in uh, one end of the cable into the iPad. I plug the other end into my Mac. Now, again, remember, my setup is a little differently. I have these uh, enclosures here, uh, and I didn't buy this for this particular reason, but this enclosure has a USB-C port. Uh, so depending on your gear, what you have, uh, you may need to use other cables. Uh, I have not tried this with a... Uh, USB-C to USB-A cable. Um, again, anything that I'm not trying in here and you have this stuff, give it a shot. Uh, I, I can't answer every single question in terms of how to connect everything. Obviously, the Ableton Push goes into the Mac. Pretty self-explanatory. There's a USB uh, port that comes out of the back of the Ableton Push, and that's going into uh, the Mac. So that is how everything um, is connected. In terms of the software for this process, uh, for me, I'm using AUM on the iPad. Uh, down the road, I'm going to try and see if I can do the same thing with Drambo. Um, I would strongly recommend, if you've never heard of AUM, please do a search on YouTube. Uh, high level, basically. Some call this a DAW. Some call it a mixer. What it's doing is allowing me to kind of uh, aggregate multiple apps on one screen. And in here... Um, I can actually go in and assign uh, what MIDI channels that I want each app to listen to that's coming from the Ableton. So that is the software that I'm using. And then the applications, uh, again, it just varies. I just happen to have, um, like I said, a few uh, apps, and I just pull them in uh, into AUM and then run the Ableton push. The, the question that I've seen asked is, does this put a lot of CPU drain um, on the iPad, and, and remember, I'm just using the Ableton to send MIDI to each individual app. I'm not playing anything here in AUM. I'm not even getting into recording stuff. 
again, this is just kind of a, a first step for me. So I'm not getting super advanced. I know there are many that want to know, can you do this? Can you do that? I'm just setting up the foundation. So I'm not pushing play on AUM. Uh, I'm just using the MIDI that's coming out of the Ableton to send it to individuals. And then I would probably record in Ableton would be my guess. But again, I haven't gotten to that point yet. This is just, again, the very basics, um, the foundation. So no, I've not seen in this particular case any issues in terms of crackling of sounds because I'm just sending MIDI to one app. That's it. I'm not, even though in this example, I've got 14 uh, instances. And the reason why I have 14, because I have the standard version of Ableton Live, or I'm sorry, intro, and I can only put in 16 tracks. So I need uh, an audio track, uh, maybe two. I, I, again, don't quote me on all this stuff. That's why I only have 14. So if I had the, as I said, the, the rich man's version of Ableton uh, Live, I probably, I think it's what's sweet. I could probably do more. But in reality, I'm just kind of pushing the envelope. I don't even think you need this. But if you want it, you have the option. So that's, I'm not seeing any issues in terms of uh, it taxing the iPad. But again, remember what I'm using it for. I haven't gotten to that next stage or what others uh, may be doing. Okay, so I've got the iPad connected uh, to the Mac. And the first step that you need to do in this situation is set up a couple things uh, on the Mac. So let's go ahead and get that going. All right, uh, super non-professional. I'm going to do my best to talk you through this, maybe point out a couple things as I'm just recording this uh, from the phone versus doing a screen share. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do is go into your audio MIDI setup. Uh, if you don't know how to get there, it's in your utilities folder. Uh, so let me come down here and find. So in utilities, it's called audio MIDI setup, as you can see right there. So let's go ahead and open that up. And when you have your iPad, okay, let me, let me back up. In my situation, I don't want to speak like this is going to work for you exactly one-to-one, -one, but in my situation, uh, when I plug in my iPad, I see it here on the left-hand side, and I need to click this Enable button. And then what's that, what that is going to do is now the computer will recognize the iPad. I'm not going to get into all, again, the, the technical in the weeds, um, two ends versus zero outs. I know someone's going to ask. I'm just setting some things up. This is where things get a little interesting and why I put an asterisk on the title of this video. So this is where I need to kind of talk at you for a minute. And maybe someone watching has a suggestion. So this is going to be a little boring, but bear with me. When I did this to start out with, uh, audio, I could see audio coming into the computer, but I couldn't hear anything. Let's see. My sound... And when I click on input, I see iPad. When I play music out of that, let me actually try and demonstrate that for you real quick. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to pick a, what I'm doing off screen is picking a random video on YouTube to get the audio in. Now, let me, right now I've got a couple things set up, so I just want to make sure there's no volume coming out the speakers because uh, it'll make sense when I get to that. But let me go ahead and play. You can see the input level coming in through here. And what I was having, or what I was finding out is, I was not hearing any audio from anywhere. Uh, nothing from the Mac, nothing from my audio interface. Uh, I tried everything. I restarted the computer, I restarted the iPad. Um, again, I don't know if it's because of this two in, two out here. So when I click on my output, I tried every little option that I have here, you know, coming through the monitor. Uh, the way my setup is, I don't know if that is the issue. Again, I'm not trying to, to really troubleshoot it. So this is where, for some, it's going to be a bit of a turnoff. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, I actually have this application called Loopback uh, by Rogue Amoeba. Rogue Amoeba. Uh, I bought this thing probably seven, eight years ago when I was doing podcasting. I'm not saying you need this, but for me it worked. Uh, again, high level what this is doing, let me just kind of, once again, pull this up and bear with me a second. So loopback is just basically creating kind of a virtual audio channel. I'm not going to explain everything on here, but what I found in my testing is, is when I selected the iPad, 
I could see the audio coming through, and then I just sent it to my audio interface. For whatever reason, Loopback allowed the audio to come out. Now, I know there have been people that have talked about creating potentially an aggregate device in here. Again, I'm going to stop right here. Um, and again, if, if this is something that, nope, I don't want to do it, then cool. I, I get it. That's why I preface uh, the asterisks again in the title. Um, I leave it up to you. If you know how to do this, fine. If you want to do some research, I'm not going to create it just because I happen to have it. So this may not be a very good uh, situation for everyone to go out and spend the money for it. But I know there are people that are using other options. So this is where I leave you. You may want to part from here and and say, hey, you know, thanks for, for the, the, the story, but it's just not for me. Or perhaps you have loopback or something else that can do in the place of this. So... Um, just a, a fair warning. I had to do a little troubleshooting. And again, that's why I'm, I'm asking maybe somebody watching knows how to get it to work and I'll just leave it there. Once I got all that up and running, then I was able to go to the next step. So what that is, is launching Ableton Live. And I probably should have it uh, in the dock so I can do for quick clicking. Off to the side, I'm going to turn on the Ableton push. And then now I could save everything as a template, but again, I want to walk you through from how, how things work. So in Ableton Live, I'm going to come into the settings. And the first thing that I want to do in my audio tab, I want to make sure that my input device, let me just show you here. So when I try and click on iPad uh, here for the input device, it doesn't stick. That was my first kind of like what's going on here. Um, but again, in my case, I have this virtual loopback audio. It's able to work. So what's happening is the audio is coming in to Ableton via this setup. And then the output, again, for my situation, I'm just sending it out to my audio interface so I can hear. Um, I didn't have to do anything with the input config. Uh, if I do that, just you know, showing those are selected. That's it there. Now the MIDI, uh, this is where I needed to make sure. And again, I, I, I'm not saying that this is right. This is just me messing around with this. So feel free to try what works best for you. But my MIDI ports, I had every excuse me, everything selected on the iPad for in and out. Um, and then that's all I had to do there. So I have a MIDI track here. Uh, my MIDI from uh, this section right here. I just listen to everything, but it's, I'm not really bringing MIDI in. Really, it's this part here, this MIDI 2. So I click this drop down and I select iPad. And then I've got, as you know, 16 channels to send uh, something to. So I just basically, however many MIDI channels that I want, I select channel 1. And then for MIDI, the, the second one, same thing here, select the iPad. And then I want to go to channel 2. Um, the audio uh, on this one here, I want to have, if I want to monitor it in Ableton, I just click the end button. Uh, otherwise, it'll just go out to my audio interface. That's as far as I went with this. Um, I was hearing a bit of a uh, echo, uh, so I just switched this to audio, and I didn't get that. I'm sorry, feedback is what I was getting. I apologize. Um, and then, basically, as you saw in that first little short video, that's where I just added more MIDI channels. Now, you can come in here and rename these things so that it matches on the screen in your push. And then from here, that's it. Um, again, I defer you back to that short video where you saw me basically just selecting uh, each MIDI channel uh, on Ableton, you know, playing the, the pads, and then that would go into um, the, the AUM app. Let me go to the AUM app and walk you through the setup on there in order to receive uh, information from the Ableton push. Okay, so in AUM, I go ahead and open that up, and I click this plus button, and I click on audio, and then I want to add a synth. Uh, I click on audio unit extension. Any apps you buy will show up here. Uh, I'll just pick this one here. Let's find one to show you this VHS synth. And then I click on the hamburger icon. And then I want to select this IDAM MIDI host. And then I come down to channel filter, say none, and then select the channel that I want to have to listen to. And then when I push on the Ableton push, 
you can see, well, you can't see me pushing. Let me uh, zoom this out. So as I push on the push, you can see it register the notes coming in through here. Again, I'm not doing any audio, I'm not getting into uh, audio output. Again, just very basic in terms of this video. And that's pretty much it. Again, very high level. Um, this is where I leave it up to you in terms of, you know, if, if you have all this type of stuff, set it up and play. That's how I... Uh, you know, did all this stuff. A lot of this is kind of things aren't working. Do your search on Google. Again, I was having that issue with the iPad audio, hoping someone maybe has a better answer. Um, but this is my story. This is how I'm doing it. I am not saying that this is the only way. I'm sure there are a lot of other ways, um, but I'm just scratching the surface. And really the idea is to inspire you to work with what you have. Take a look at your toolbox. I know it's very easy when we watch videos on YouTube, people sharing their new shiny toys and, um, and all the reviews we see, and those are great. Uh, but if you have something, especially if you are running an iPad or have one, consider it as an option. I'm not saying to get rid of your hardware sense. I'm not pushing. This is the only way to do it. It's really my story giving you some ideas and then you can say hey you know what nope not for me <laughs> i'm good or hey thanks for uh, the information and i can maybe potentially put it in my workflow uh, purely your choice uh, but i'm going to keep messing around keep exploring but uh, really excited about this opportunity and again i'm just using synth apps um, I, I need to figure out can i use drum apps and there's a lot more i need to kind of figure out so Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this gave you some inspiration. Take care. Catch you in the next video.